Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable remarks. I consider it a great honor to welcome Mohammed Mohsin Khan Lagari, for, uh, the Minister for Education, Punjab, Pakistan, for opening speech of today's conference. He has been a strong advocate for the water issue and trying to raise awareness of imminent water crisis that Pakistan is facing right now and presented Pakistan at World Water Forum and the 2016 United Nations Climate Change Conference. Please, sir. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Let me start off by appreciating this great initiative by the Center of Excellence in Water Resource Engineering at UET for holding this international conference on hydrology and water resources. I had scheduled my whole day to be here and learn from the experts who were going to be talking on this subject. But unfortunately, uh, a cabinet meeting has been called and I will have to leave around uh, 10. It's at a 10, so around quarter to 10, I'll have to uh, leave and maybe I can come back and after the meeting, uh, join in later also if it ends earlier. Water is one of those things that is life. I mean, uh, you can't imagine life without it. Uh, Rasulullah Sallam has been, uh, is reported to have said that don't waste water even when you're standing by a flowing river. So we have to uh, conserve water, we have to uh, use it wisely. And uh, the biggest thing that I keep telling everyone is uh, trying to get the, give them the importance of water is that when we have, say, electricity shortage, we can set up a new production plant and a new uh, factory will start making electricity. We have any other shortages. We don't have enough petroleum. Uh, we can import petroleum. We don't have enough gas. We can import gas. But with water, this is it. Whatever nature gives us is the water that we have, and we have to use it very wisely, or we are going to be facing enormous problems. Water uh, means different things to different people. But like I said earlier, for us, water is life because it sustains our agriculture, which is the economic lifeline of this country. And uh, according to estimates, about 60 percent of the people live in the rural areas who are dependent on agriculture. Agriculture uses over 90 percent of the water that we have, and um, we have to use it more efficiently there to make it available for the other competing demands of uh, uh, the industry and, and the cities. Uh, uh, but first we have to, the largest user of water is the agriculture sector and we have to uh, use the water more efficiently. Uh, the value of water keeps increasing with the increasing uh, population. At one time, we were a water abundant country. We had about 6,000 cubic meters per person and now we are uh, below 1,000. And some estimates put us at about 800 uh, cubic meters per person. So uh, it puts us, according to the Pockenmark water stress indicator, it puts us in the water scarce category. This paints a very scary picture for us, but uh, it's not really as bad as it may sound because uh, we rank 17th in availability of fresh water globally. Uh, we we need to tap into our resources and use them more efficiently. There is, a, there is an effort being made, but I think the effort needs to be picked up. The pace needs to be increased. And it is, uh, it is when the industry, the government and the academia interact together and we can come up with solutions. Uh, the, the government departments or the industries can't survive in uh, this competitive world without taking help from the academia and the research institutions. And the research institutions, with whatever research is being done, whatever innovations are being made, unless they share it with the actual users, in this case, uh, the Punjab Irrigation Department being the custodian of the waters of this uh, part of the country, unless we share knowledge with each other and we interact more often, uh, we cannot be... Uh, very useful to the society as a whole. We in the Punjab Irrigation Department are the custodians of the surface water uh, and with this new water act that we put in, even uh, 
the custodian of the aquifer. We operate and maintain one of the largest contiguous gravity flow irrigation systems in the world. The system serves about 21 million acre culture with command area and irrigation water is delivered through over 58,000 outlets of taking from canals having a total water carrying capacity of 120,000 Q6. And it's a over 23,000 mile long uh, network, which is fed by 13 barrages. And there are uh, about 57 small dams that we have uh, constructed over the period of time. Irrigated agriculture serves as a lifeline of sustaining our agriculture in the province. And irrigation land supplies 90% of the irrigation, uh, sorry, agriculture production and accounts for about one fourth of the GDP of the country. The water sector is currently facing a major challenge due to its aging infrastructure. Uh, our infrastructure hasn't been maintained as it should have been. And uh, there's a water stress because of the growing population, as it was discussed earlier. Then we have this issue of either we are water starved or we don't have enough water or we have flooding. So we, we keep swinging between the two extremes. There are times when uh, we are flooded and then there are times when we are starving for water. Uh, a major issue there is that we haven't been quite able to manage our resources uh, well enough. I was at a water conference and I was when I was talking about the shortage of uh, or uh, per capita uh, lack of avail availability of water. Uh, one of the experts during the tea break came up to me and said. Uh, at that time, I was a senator. I was in the Senate. He came up to me and he said, Senator, which other river system has 145 million acre feet of water? And they complain about shortage of water. It is not that you're short of water. It is just that you're not governing it right. It's a major governance issue. So uh, we need to address those issues. And uh, since I have been given this responsibility, I have been trying my best to come up with uh, a better usage policy of the water that we have. We have, uh, we have to increase our water productivity. Our water productivity is one of the lowest in the world. The agriculture produce that we get from our uh, limited resource is uh, ranked at quite the bottom of the countries of the world uh, in terms of productivity. Uh, we need to engage with uh, the universities, the agriculture department, irrigation department and the universities have to work together to come up with uh, solutions for better uh, 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 production, uh, better productivity of our crops. Um, sometimes when I see people working on, on these very high tech uh, solutions like the drip irrigations and the sprinkler systems, and I, when I uh, look around in our society and interact with farmers, uh, the feedback that I get is that uh, unfortunately those technologies are not within the financial reach and also the technical know-how of a common farmer that we have. Uh, it costs too much and it is a little complicated for a simple farmer to operate. So that's where uh, that's where I would like to work with the uh, engineering university to come up with some kind of solutions which are not that high tech and then are affordable and increase water productivity. Uh, I was reading a paper the other day uh, that if we increase our water productivity. We produce about 130 grams per cubic meter and China produces about 860 grams per cubic meter. And I was reading that the US uh, production is over 1.6 kilograms per cubic meter. So that's how far behind we are. We all talk of building new reservoirs. Reservoirs is something that requires a lot of money. Res reservoirs are very important too. We are, uh, uh, the world average is to store about 40% of its uh, river flows. And we in Pakistan are at around 10%. And uh, we don't have enough reservoirs too. But reservoirs alone is not the answer. 
we have to look at uh, water productivity as well. We have to look at how we use the limited water that we have. And for that, my request to uh, the university would be, uh, and, and I would take this uh, as, as our first contact and take it forward from here, to interact more often and to interact, to come up with solutions for uh, the problems that we have, the issues that we have. Um, the whole world uh, must be aware of, at least the Pakistani uh, participants here, uh, must be aware of the ongoing uh, tussle between uh, the provinces in getting their equitable share from the um, in this basin and uh, the implementation of the 1991 water record. And the major issue that we have is that we don't really have the numbers. We don't have the monitoring devices. We don't have the accounting principles in there. The water there, is, how is it going to be accounted for? There's always tension between Sindh and Punjab on being upper and lower Liberian. We have uh, uh, Sindh and uh, Balochistan have their own issues in, in their sharing of the waters. So that is something that we can uh, work on and maybe come up with a, with a mechanism to monitor the waters that are flowing in. Even within the province, when we distribute our water amongst the uh, irrigators here, uh, we need to have a, a fairly good idea of where exactly which water is going and, and how much water is going where, which are the stretches of a canal which have uh, more water theft. Uh, which are the areas which don't have enough water theft. The ones that have more water theft need to be uh, monitored more uh, vigilantly. So we need to, we can, we have an opportunity to work together uh, and come up with solutions. Uh, this, I was reading and I was uh, amazed that this irrigation system that we have was developed by colonial rulers and their engineers indigenously. They don't have any canals in, in, in England. They, they don't have any rivers, the kind of rivers that we have in England. They came here and they started, uh, they saw this enormous opportunity uh, of uh, the rivers flowing through and vast tracts of land, which could be brought under cultivation, and the whole system was developed. So uh, we need to move forward from there. We need to come up with uh, a better uh, uh, usage of our water. Uh, our uh, canal network, uh, the link canal network that we have. I was at a conference and somebody made a comment which made me very proud. He said the link canal system in Pakistan is an engi civil engineering miracle. We take water from one river, put it in another river, and then go irrigate waters, uh, lands from, for the, from the third river. We take water from River Indus, put it in... Um, Say, where do we do? From Cheshma, we take it into the Cheshma Jhelum uh, link canal. We put it in River Jhelum. We bring it to, uh, to Trimu Barrage. And from Trimu Barrage, we feed areas that were fed originally by Ravi and Chenab. We, we take uh, uh, water from River uh, Indus at Tonsa. From Tonsa, we take it from the in Tonsa Panjnad link canal. We take it down to Panjnad and irrigate Rahimiyar Khan and Bahawalpur from that. So this is this this is the kind of the competence our engineers used to have, and this is these are the engineering miracles that our engineers have been producing. Uh, but over a period of time, somehow there has been a disconnect between the uh, the, the, the department, uh, the and the industry and academia, and we haven't really worked together. Uh, we are. Uh, working on the infrastructure, the brick and mortar, which everybody quite uh, likes and wants to hear about. Uh, we are working on rehabilitating our barrages and working on canals and all those things. But uh, for me, those aren't really important. The important thing is uh, the, the soft skills, the things that we cannot touch and feel, but they the ones that they have uh, enormous impact on, on, the, on the systems. And I'm I'm reminded of my uh, earlier days uh, when I I studied in the U.S. and when I came back I used to work for um, the Compaq computer dealer here and we would I'm talking about 87 88 and we would install and I was into uh, I was in communication so I would install their networks and at that time Compaq computer had come up with a Compaq 386 those old enough to remember uh, might recall that. And it was supposed to be, uh, and we would install a network and use that as the network server. 
And at that time, when uh, the dollar rupee parity was about, I think, 13 or 14 rupees, it used to cost 320,000 rupees. So when we would install that network, uh, people would have no issue paying 320,000 rupees for that computer. But the Novell uh, network the software that we had to put in there with cards, you know, they would have an issue paying for the for the software. The, they would say, oh, only two disks, why are you going to come? Or these are just mere two disks. It is very hard to tell people that without those disks, without that software, the hardware is of no use. I am having this uh, issue with my colleagues in the parliament also. Everybody thinks that spending money is the answer to everything. Whereas I believe that, that the software, the, the skills that need to be in the HR development of HR, uh, making policy changes, bringing in uh, 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 new uh, thinking as to how we're going to go about is the answer to it. So in that, uh, we have worked on, a, we are currently working on upgrading our 18 and 1873 Canal and Drainage Act. Uh, we will, uh, inshallah, bring in uh, a water uh, policy which we brought in where, by which we can uh, monitor our uh, groundwater situation. We can uh, register our, our uh, uh, usage of the underground water, the quality of water that is put into drainages. Uh, that's a major issue that the quality of water that we have, it, it's very, uh, it hurts me immensely when I go down to Baloki and see uh, the green water, which is the industrial uh, disposed of water and uh, going into the Baloki uh, BS link, Sidnai link canal, and then it goes down there and from Sulaimanki, it is, it, it, that is drinking water for people of Bahawal Nagar and that area, which has a saline underground water and they don't, have a clean drinking water. This is the water that they drink, which is the industrial waste for areas from around Lahore. So these are the things that need to be addressed. And uh, this is where uh, uh, I would request the, the academia to please come in and help us with these things. Uh, like I said, I was uh, really looking forward to being here for a much longer time and uh, learn from all of you. Uh, but uh, this this cabinet uh, meeting that is at 10, I'll have to leave by about quarter to 10, I think. And I would appreciate if any papers that are read out or any uh, uh, something, a readable material is shared with me. And uh, hopefully this will be uh, a beginning of a, of a more interactive relationship between uh, the University of Engineering and Technology Lahore and the Irrigation Department. Most of my engineers are your alumni. Most of them, I think, over 90% are alumni of UET, and there are some very few from other institutions as well. So uh, we both owe each other, the irrigation department and the UET owe each other a lot. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to be with you here today. And uh, I will be here for the next 15, 20 minutes. But like I said, I have a cabinet meeting at 10 and I'll be leaving. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your influential message. We must ensure water conservation practices in our life. All the guest keynote speakers and authors and participants are requested to turn on their cameras for photograph. Thank you, everyone.